So there are certain places like Mount Shasta, or certain uh, gatherings like this gathering, or certain dreams that penetrate normal dreams, certain experiences that turn your life around, and they are to be honored as precious forms that somehow penetrate it and point it back to this that is here and sacred and precious at all times. And that our brief time gather in this meeting and individually in these forms, in this planet, for however long it has, can be a deep recognition of that a deeper recognition of that, a profound honoring of that, and an investigation of that. So that the human mind is turned to something more than finding what's wrong. It's actually turned to the wonder of existence. Hello and welcome to Being Yourself, Self-Inquiry with Gangaji. My name is Barbara Denampont. As we begin a new year, I want to bring you something from Gangaji's archives that gives us all an opportunity to honor the sacred, to honor each other, and in Gangaji's words, to honor life itself. So I selected this particular monologue from 2009. It was recorded in Mount Shasta, and in it, Gangaji points to the essential recognition that you are the sanctuary. You are home. I invite you to take this moment, wherever you find yourself, to rest in the wonder of who you are. Hello, everyone. It's beautiful to meet with you here at the foot of this extraordinary life form, Mount Shasta sacred life form. And this meeting itself is a safe, sacred life form composed of all of us and whatever lives on us and in us. <laughs> Coming together in this particular formation for really a brief, brief time <clears throat> and then dispersing. So we, we have these monuments to huge, steady, deep, powerful life forms, Mount Shasta. But if we could speed time up, we would see there was a time when it wasn't here, and then it rose up, and there will be a time when it won't be here. And so while we can feed on life forms as we are food for other life forms, we, we have to, at a certain point, recognize there is that which holds it all. That which we appear in and that which we live because of and that which we disappear back into. Which the whole Milky Way disappears back into. Eventually. The great benefit of this life form, our life form, that we are a composite of, both outwardly and inwardly, is that we actually get to turn our consciousness back to what is present in all life form. And that's life, of course. It's not unreasonable. You don't have life form without life, right? It's logical. So then what is life? And does life exist independent of its form? So when you die, when I die, when our bodies drop, return to dust, does life die? If you actually ask these questions very deeply of yourself, there's a possibility of discovering what is immortal. But it's not you as your body, or as your personality, or even your soul, as you think of your soul as some kind of... uh, (laughs) amoebic-like thing. It's you as life. And once there is a flip 
of consciousness, individual consciousness, back to its deeper identity, its true identity as life itself. Consciousness as life, before, during, and after life form, then the time experienced as life form is free. It's free and it is sacred. It's not free of pain, it's not free of troubles. It's not free of disease. It's not free of death. But it's free in that it is life and it knows itself to be life. And while it may be attached to a particular life form, myself, yourself, others, Mount Shasta, there is a deeper attachment and that's to life itself. And in that shift or in that flip deeper into oneself, the end of being haunted by the death of life forms and the beginning of recognizing the sacredness of life itself. Formless and form then. So the Buddhists speak of it as emptiness and and form is emptiness and emptiness form. Emptiness has a weird sound to it to our Western ears sometimes. So if we think of it as life form and life, just pure life, the space that's between you and me, that's alive with consciousness, this, this that directs the blood flow and the heartbeat that animates the form. And, and this, they're already dying, they've been cut, but they're still radiating life. Even when they're dried, that will radiate life, even if there's a picture of them and they're long gone or extinct, you will be struck by the radiation of life. <laughs> I saw this man's, I saw a video of this man's bones being burnt in a funeral pyre and his pelvis cracking and his skull cracking and his form is gone. Papagia's form is gone. Maybe your mother's form is gone, your father's form is gone, your child's form could be gone, your husband, your wife, your friend, your enemy, gone. But the life that they represented in this short time is here. So the good news of this, of course, is extraordinary. And the possibility of this is that you recognize it as yourself, this lifeness, not separate from this form, but free of it, and that you live your life as a sacred life, not a self-righteous life, not an imitation of sacredness, but as a precious experience that will be over, that will end, but that its flavor can have contributed to the precious sacredness of life itself. Mostly we don't do that. I'm not saying you, I'm saying we as a collective human species. So there are certain places like Mount Shasta, or certain uh, gatherings like this gathering, or certain dreams that penetrate normal dreams, certain experiences that turn your life around, and they are to be honored as precious forms that somehow penetrated and pointed back to this that is here and sacred and precious at all times. And that our brief time gather in this meeting and individually in these forms and this planet for however long it has can be a deep recognition of that a deeper recognition of that, a profound honoring of that, and an investigation of that. So that the human mind is turned to something more than finding what's wrong. It's actually turned to the wonder of existence. It's evolutionary to find what's wrong. Then you can correct it. 
There's nothing wrong with finding what's wrong. It's important to see where there are mistakes so they can be corrected. But if that's all we're seeing, then there is a very deep, unnecessary suffering that's a result of dishonoring the precious sacredness of life, of beingness. So it is my intention as being a part of this beautiful formation of individuals that come together to collectively discover what is the same in each of us. It's my intention that that be discovered in a way that nothing can dislodge it. No amount of trouble, no amount of disease, no amount of pain, no amount of tendency to complain (laughs) can dislodge this deeper peace, this surrender to yourself as life. And what a I mean, just to take a moment, I mean, just the fact of life, you don't have to know anything else. We don't have to know any metaphysics, we don't even have to know the word life form, life consciousness. Just stop for a moment. Life, (laughs) whether it's good, a good life, a bad life, a successful life, a failure of a life, life. Just the wonder of that can obliterate all of the dishonoring of that. In an instant, this instant. So it's my conviction that that's what brings us together. Especially when we are brought together purposely for that, and that's this meeting this afternoon, in this holy place, this holy meeting, holy life forms. So I bow to you as myself in that, and I receive you as myself, and meet you as a deeper investigation of that. (laughs) I wonder if people living in Shasta, there must be many of you who live in Shasta, do you like start to take it for granted? (laughs) That's good. It's very interesting the way our human uh, brains are set up to, to search for what's wrong and recognizing that that is legitimate in many instances, necessary, but also when it's out of balance is the cause of the deepest suffering and contributes to the suffering of, of others, of all. So I invite you to come up here and start the conversation by what's right And then if you have something that's wrong, let's examine it. Maybe it's not wrong at all. (laughs) It's often what we think is wrong. When we're willing to actually open to it, it becomes part of this uh, divine revelation, this wonder of life. Thank you for listening today. I am certain that when we rest in the wholeness that is here, it reverberates around the world. Gangaji has been teaching for almost 30 years, and every program she offers through her foundation supports this deepening discovery of what is free and at home. I hope you will always take full advantage of these podcasts, or the webcasts, or the books, the blogs, YouTube, Gangaji's retreats, and even the scholarships for retreats. It's an oasis of support created by a global community, and it is here for you. You can connect to Gangaji immediately through her website at gangaji.org. That's G-A-N-G-A-J-I dot O-R-G. Before we go, I want to send our love out to the Australian Sangha and really to all of Australia as they face these catastrophic fires. Gangaji has had the privilege and honor of traveling through the land of Australia, the sacred land. And we can take a moment and honor that land and honor everyone there. We love you and we are with you. Until next time.